Good morning, everybody. You hear the sirens? They've been going on for quite some time. But everybody who celebrates Easter, happy Easter. I, I would say that, but you know, I, I only learned recently that it's really a pagan holiday. So I, I, I generally don't celebrate pagan holidays. But I do like Easter bunnies, little bunnies. Little bunnies are cute and the symbols of Easter, you know, Easter eggs and little rabbits. Easter candy, of which I don't have any. <laughs> But yeah, so last night I was going to post another video and I decided I was really tired from collecting wood um, a good part of the day. What happens here is the criminals are very destructive and they're opportunists, you know, for the plausible deniability. So if, if, it, if it's a little bit windy here and nothing falls down when I go to sleep at night, the criminals will make sure that they tear branches off of the trees and throw them everywhere. And that's what's been happening. I can tell the, the difference between uh, naturally falling branches and ones that are deliberately torn off trees and thrown around. So yesterday I actually cleaned all in back of the buildings there. I picked up all the wood here. Um, the day before, everything in here, along the county road, which is my property across the street that was totally cleaned up last year, branches everywhere. I collected little piles. I brought some back to burn. But it's very time consuming. I don't have the tractor or the tools or a pickup truck so that I could just throw stuff in. I've got this little wagon <laughs> that I throw things in and I have to walk back and forth and back and forth with it. So that's what I was doing yesterday, and I was really tired from doing it. You know, just being, the targeting is mentally exhausting. It's physically exhausting, just, you know, walking the property and uh, picking up these branches and just being angry about it. Angry about what they're doing to deliberately destroy somebody else's property. But they're not doing it to my neighbor. So, you know, when people say, oh, well, they do it to everybody. Well, no, that's not true. They're not doing it to my neighbor's property. I guarantee they're not doing it to the other neighbor, the perpetrator. I'm not, I'm, I guarantee they're not doing it to any three Mason wives or their properties or any cop wives. I guarantee it's only happening here to me. Yes, hi honey, you wanna say hello? Say hello, everybody. Say hi, say my mommy died. Um, she is one of the little girls who was born of China Girl. Um, that was her last litter of kittens. But um, so what happened was I went into bed last night. I wanted to take a rest, just a, a rest for a little while. Brought a book with me. These effers knocked me out. Literally the next time I woke up was five, almost five o'clock in the morning. It was 4.55. Lights were on in my house. I was in my clothing. I wanted to shower, brush my teeth, and then get back into bed for a couple of more hours. Here comes, here comes, um, him squeak. Here, here's that little boy that was dropped off, dumped here. He looks just like popcorn. You wanna say hello? Say good morning, everybody. Hello. So what they do is they take advantage. Hi, <laughs> hello, hello, say hi everybody. I'm a cute cat. I'm a little boy. I still got my little nuggets in the back there. Look, they're checking each other out. She's like, nah, I'm not having any of it. I'm spayed. <laughs> um, it's, it's, not, it's not my thing. <laughs> right? It's not my thing. And what happened yesterday? Did we clean your ears and give you a manicure yesterday and brushed you? Because I see that you've got scratches by your ear. It looks like you got into a tiff with popcorn. 
All right, did you get into a tiff with popcorn? Huh? Is that what is that why you have scratches by your ear? So anyway, um yeah, so these criminals take advantage of the fact that I was lying on my bed without any protective covering and whatever. Um, they have been going after my elbows. And there was a targeted individual online who um, wrote, who showed us that they're going after his inner left knee. They're doing the same thing to me, but that's been going on since 2020 when they performed a covert surgical procedure on that knee. It's amazing how on like Easter Sunday, there's so much traffic on a rural road. That's like the fourth car so far. <laughs> oh, maybe they're just doing their last minute Easter shopping. And where did this come from? So, um, so yeah, they say take advantage when your, your energy level is low, when you're tired, and then they bombard you more. And, you know, thank you for all the um, recommendations about cameras, etc. You know, for the newcomers, I moved from New Jersey. I spent thousands and thousands of dollars on security cameras, hardwire, plugins, trail cameras. I had trail cameras in my own backyard. I had trail cameras set up in my bedroom in the corner pointed towards my front door and these perpetrators these criminals these these isn't this is not your dr little everyday uh, person who wants to cop some money for drugs this is this is military grade weaponry these are military grade trained perpetrators it's infraguard and even though some of it may include your neighbors, I'm not discrediting or discounting the fact that it could be your neighbor because they're using your neighbor's homes as surveillance spaces. They're using your neighbor's homes to implant cameras pointing towards your house. They're using your neighbor's homes to install security lights that are high up in the air pointing towards your house. They're using your neighbor's homes like my neighbor to the left of me here. I don't even, I've never met them. Never. Could you imagine living somewhere almost five years? You're in the middle of here and they're not a lot of neighbors, but you don't even know who the F your neighbor is? That one? No idea. From what I was told, after I moved in, she moved out. Yeah, she moved out and um, moved in with her boyfriend and left the house vacant. Who does that? So maybe that's one of those surveillance homes. You know, they pay people to move out. They pay people to use their homes. They pay people to install devices for some money on the side. And they do do that. So don't discount that it, your neighbors are not involved. They obviously are. You've seen my video footage of the, uh, the criminal. Here comes another one, watch. Remote rural Kentucky. Cars driving back and forth, Sunday back and forth. No, they're not going to church. I'm telling you that I don't, these people don't go to church. <laughs> they, they don't go to church. But anyway, <laughs> that's my little rant <laughs> for this morning. I just wanted to tell you why I was not online last night. I was actually, and this is probably why they put me to sleep. I wanted to do a live. I figured Saturday night before holiday, um, I would do a live and everybody could have a conversation. We could have a conversation, ask questions back and forth. Um, and the, the criminals knocked me out. Yeah, I went to lie down. I guess it was around 10, 10 or 10.30. I figured, okay, 
I'll rest for a little while, read for a little bit. I purchased a book on Morgellons from a guy that has a Morgellons channel on YouTube. It's a really thin book. It has a green cover in case you've seen it. And they don't want me to read this damn book. <laughs> Every time I pick up this book to read, they knock me out. And the book is so thin, like I could read it like probably in an hour. It's so thin and the print is large. I read a few pages of it already, but I wanted to read about it more. And then uh, this morning I was listening to Dr. Eric Berg. I'm subscribed to his channel. And he offered some information about the one vitamin, the one vitamin that is deficient in Lyme disease. Now I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say that I didn't contract Lyme. I was going to say I was going to contract, contracted Lyme disease in January of 2011. 11, yeah, 2011, January, cold month of the year, wear hats and stuff. Please stop fighting, guys. I see who the, I see who the, the bully is. Look at them, they're so bad. Anyway, um, I found a tick embedded in my left ear. This is what these criminals do. They infected me with Lyme disease. But anyway, we're going to fast forward. If anybody wants to know about how I got through that, what I did, it was a two year process, literally two years. It knocked me out. And this is why I didn't continue with my PhD. And this is why they did it. I was enrolling in the PhD program for forensic psychology. I was on a roll. And then suddenly I start not feeling well. I find the tick, call my doctor. He says, well, you don't have to worry about anything yet. Wait for three weeks, and if you get sick, <laughs> you've got Lyme. Well, that's what I did. I saved the tick, though. I did save it. Um, but I never did anything with it because I got so sick. Yeah, literally three weeks later, I was, I, I could hardly move. And I went to the doctor. Um, they test me. They find nothing wrong. But they prescribed me amoxicillin, I think it was. They prescribed me an antibiotic. It's still bad. And then months later, months later, I go for another test. I go for the um, Elisa, Elisa test. Oh, no, nothing wrong because it was already too late. Those tests are so inaccurate. Um, they are highly inaccurate. They ha the only way they're accurate is if you're tested within a certain time frame of the transmission of the disease. So anyway, we're going to fast forward. And um, during that time, yeah, during that, I just lost my train of thought. During that time, I became really deathly ill over it. The only way I was able to make the determination in writing that I had Lyme disease was with a lab in California called Igenix, I-G-E-N-X. Um, the unfortunate thing is that test costs about $1,000. But at that point, it's like I could not care less. I had, to, I had to find out what was going on. And at that point, when I finally had the test done, look at that. They just lock my phone. They lock my phone because there's somebody, there's somebody on the property that they don't want you to see. Um, it was already considered to be late stage Lyme disease. So anyway, Dr. Eric Berg says that it's vitamin D. You could have, you could test that you have very high vitamin D levels, whether you have Lyme or not. But if it's not in deep into your tissues, he says, if it's not deep into your tissues, the vitamin D is not into your tissues. And that's what happens with the spirochete. The spirochete prevents vitamin D, even though you have the high levels of vitamin D in your body, from penetrating deep into your tissues. Because the spirochete, the little creature that weasels its way into your immune system, blocks 
the ability for your tissues to maintain and absorb it. So I've got a very low battery light, guys. If anybody wants to hear more about uh, Lyme disease, I don't know if this is a taboo topic on YouTube. I don't, I don't even know what's taboo anymore. Um, people are posting detox videos, and I posted a detox video on TikTok, and it was removed, uh, which I was shocked, totally shocked. Um, it had the word, probably because it had the word detox in the subject heading, but anyway, I'm going to sign off for now. hope everybody's having a good day. This is Lorraine Alternative Homesteading. Hit the thumbs up. And uh, this is what it looks like here today. My girlies are making noise because they're laying eggs. That's what <laughs> they have to announce to the world that they're laying an egg. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you soon, guys.